again, I want to appreciate you all for making time to come to church. Uh, it shows how, uh, um, how committed you are to the things of the Spirit of God. And I trust and I pray that you shall not be the same after this teaching in Jesus' name. We are lo uh, looking at Luke 17, verse number 12. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourself to the priest. And so it was as they went. Tell yourself, as they went. As they, went. they were cleansed. All right, verse number 15 says, And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face as his feet giving at his feet, giving thanks, give, giving him thanks, sorry. And he was what? A Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were they not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Let's read verse number 19 again. And he said to him, Arise, Go your way, your faith has made you well. Father, we thank you and we bless you. As we look into your word today, we thank you because the Bible says that the entrance of your word brings light and illumination. Today, mighty Father, we are approaching your throne with gratitude in our hearts and in our minds. Thank you, mighty Father. Thank you for illumination. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are able to heal even during holidays, that you never take a holiday. Thank you, mighty God, that you are able to deliver today that you're able to restore today, and you're able to minister to us. Holy Spirit, minister to your people today, including me, as we hear your word. Thank you, mighty Father. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And God's good people said a better amen. amen. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Amen. So we are going to be looking at a topic I'm calling gratitude and thanksgiving. Gratitude and thanksgiving. We may not extrapolate uh, deeply into the text that we have looked at, uh, Luke 17, verse number 12. We may do it some other time. We may look deeply into it. But allow me to take you through a journey of gratitude and thanksgiving. I will uh, just uh, 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 go, through, go through what we have read in Luke 17, verse 12. Here we have a puzzle. A puzzle. They lift up their voice and say, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So Jesus sees their situation, their predicament, and he tells them, go show yourself to the priest. I thought, Jesus, you are meant to heal people. But here you're telling these guys to go show themselves to the priest. And so as it was, as they went, they were cleansed. Okay, we are going to uh, extrapolate that some other time. But I wanted to show you that they were healed, all of them, the ten of them. But one came back to say thank you. And what happens? They coming back to say thank you to God, to Jesus, in verse number 19, he says, your faith has made you well. In other words, you can never detach thanksgiving from faith. If you're writing down, you can say this. You can never detach thanksgiving from faith. All right? So, there will be moments in your life that you will begin to thank God even when situations are worse. It is a sign of faith. It's a sign that you have faith in God. What is thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is, is an expression of gratitude. It also means a feeling of appreciation, of thanks. The best definition is the acknowledgement of having received something good from someone. Every time you and I give thanks, we are basically thanking him. For the things he has done, he is doing, and he shall do. It is a statement of faith from us towards God. That what we have faith in, he is able to deliver it to us. Praise be to God. Like for example, you should approach God in this way. Father, I thank you for our home. I thank you that you are able to give us our home. You may not have that physical home, but your thanksgiving is actually doing what? Placing your faith 
upon God. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. So I'm going to share a number of things that we need to know about thanksgiving. And then we'll be out of here in Jesus' mighty name. What you need to know, if you're writing down, what you need to know about thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, number one, is the will of God. Thanksgiving is the will of God. First Thessalonians 5.18, the Bible says in everything, in some things, in most of the things, in a couple of things, when things are okay, when things are not okay, it says what? In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So thanksgiving is the will of God. Some people ask, Pastor, how can I know? How can I tell that uh, 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 I am following the, the will of God? The first thing is thanksgiving. You thank God when things are okay. You thank God when things are not okay. Praise be to God. I'm going to read the message Bible. It says, thank God no matter what happens. This is the way God wants you who belong to Christ Jesus to live. You want to be conscious and know whether you are in the will of God? Give thanks. Praise be to God. Give thanks that you are alive today. How many of you have lost close friends this year? Close uh, uh, relatives, sorry. Amen. But you are alive today here because of God. So you may not understand why your family member passed on, but give thanks. How do you give thanks, Mr. Francis? Thank you, Lord, for the years that person lived. Thank you, Lord, for the gift that that person was to our family. That is how you give thanks. Praise be to God. Thank God. You thank God for the times you spend with that person. He may not be here, but you thank God. Praise be to God. When we purpose to thank God for everything, that allows uh, him to come into our lives and show us even the more uh, uh, and takes away what we call bitterness and offenses and all manner of vices. We can never, we can never be uh, bitter and thankful at the same time. You can never be offended and thankful at the same time. Praise be to God. Thank God that we are able to fellowship and worship in Kenya. There are states, there are places in the world where you cannot share the gospel. You have never seen that? Have you ever seen that? There are places we can never share the gospel. There are places they can never meet publicly like we are doing. Matter of fact, if you go to YouTube and check underground Chinese churches, you'll be shocked. There's a video I saw uh, earlier this year where Bibles were being distributed to, to those people. And guess what, Ken? They were fighting to get one Bible. It got worse that they had to tear pages. So you take Ephesians chapter 1, he takes Galatians, another person takes Genesis. Then when you're through, you exchange. It is so, go, go check on YouTube, the Chinese underground churches. They cram the Bible. You, you, let me leave you there. <laughs> they cram the Bible. They meet in the underground tunnels. Thank God that we are able to fellowship one another. Praise be to God. And let me tell you, it's going to get funny and, and nastier. In the days to come, in the days to come, because we are living in the last days, in the days to come, the word of God will be rare. You remember in the, in the, in the times of, uh, who was this? Who was this guy? Samuel. The Bible says that the word of God was rare. I tell you, even right now, where we are heading to, the word of God will be rare. So don't, don't, don't get to a place where you don't fellowship in church. I tell you the truth, we are in the last days. Praise be to God. Thank God that we, we have a family church, a local church, where we can come and fellowship one another, where we can build one another. Praise be to God. I'm reminded of a pastor, I can't remember his name, whether he was Sadiq or something. He went to preach in Iraq. And he was... I think he was taken by the police officers. They said that he was uh, spreading a blasphemous religion and stuff. And that man was jailed for, he was jailed for 19 years. 19 years. And they did a mistake because <laughs> they jailed the wrong person. He evangelized in that jail that no prisoner was not born again. He reformed the entire church, the entire prison, turned it into a church. 
That is why when we get to heaven, there are certain people. <laughs> there are certain people, my friend. Hey, these guys, eh, they will be maybe talking to Apostle Paul. Eh? Maybe me and you will be talking to Judas. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm asking him. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Say, I will be thankful. When you understand things, be thankful. When you don't understand, be thankful. Praise be to God. And in this journey of life, Mr. Francis, go to see you and your wife. And in this life I have seen, there will be times that God will do something and he doesn't require to give you an answer why he did it. Yeah. There will be moments when uh, I have seen Christians who are stuck in asking God, why did you let something happen? There will be moments that God will do something. Don't you sing that song that says he's God all by himself? See, he's God. He doesn't, he doesn't need to tell you why he's doing some certain things. He is God all by himself. So in those situations, you say what? I thank you, Lord. I don't understand it, but I thank you. You know better than me. Praise be to God. Number two, number two, thanksgiving is a good thing. Thanksgiving is a good thing. The world is always looking for a good thing and is willing to pay large sums of money for something of merit. That is why the Bible tells us it is a good thing to give thanks to God. Psalm 92, verse 1 to 6. The New Living Translation, I'm going to read it for you because of time. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to the Most High. It is good to proclaim your unfailing love in the morning, your faithfulness in the evening, accompanied by the ten-string harp and the melody of lyre. You thrill me, Lord, with all you have done for me. I sing for joy because of what you have done. O oh Lord, what great works you do, and how deep are your thoughts. Only a simpleton will not know, and only a fool will not understand this. Thanksgiving is a good thing. Praise be to God. Number three, thanksgiving is a lifestyle. Thanksgiving is a lifestyle. Just like today, a drunkard will be caught drinking. And we can say, <laughs> that is their lifestyle. Your lifestyle is what? Thanksgiving. Your lifestyle is what? Worship. Your lifestyle is what? Praise. Praise be to God. And one of the greatest lifestyles you can endeavor to live uh, is a life of gratitude towards God. As a believer, your lifestyle is a lifestyle of worship for God. You worship God for who he is and thank him and praise him for what he has done. Let me repeat that statement. Your lifestyle is a lifestyle of worship, thanksgiving, and praise. So, we worship God for what he has done. No. We worship God for who he is. We praise him for what he has done. Let me repeat that again. We worship God for who he is. So, I don't worship God because God gives people husbands or wives or money or material stuff. I worship God for who he is. Remember, people of God, you have been created to worship. Never forget that. You have been created to do what? Talk to me. You have been created to do what? To worship. And that is the reason why if you remove God from your system, from your way of doing things, uh, by default, you will begin worshipping something. Either you'll begin worshipping your wife, you'll begin, yes, people worship their wives. <laughs> what is worship? If you can remember my definition of worship. Huh? Huh? Placing value higher than God. That is worship. See, there are people who place value more on their spouses. People who place value more on money. So, worship, like I, I wanted to define this way, but worship, as much as it's placing value on God, thanksgiving also is acknowledging that value. That Lord, whether I have it or not, I choose to give you thanks. Whether I understand or not, I choose to give you thanks. I acknowledge your sovereign in my life. Praise be to God. And that is why we should gravitate and graduate 
to having a relationship with God, whether things are working or not. That was what the early church used to do. The early church was never caught up with finances. They were never caught up with, with uh, happenings. Praise be to God. I, I, I know there is a place for prosperity, but I, I, also, I also I am grieved in my spirit because that gospel of prosperity has really interfered with the lifestyle of, a, of the believer. To an extent that, you can tell when somebody is praising. And you know, uyo ni mshahara imeingia. Vile anaruka hivi, hii ni mshahara. I can tell you love God when it is January the 15th. Mm. Eh, I can tell. You can tell the moods of the believers in church. Huh? Praise be to God. If you can dance when you have a car, dance when the car is not there. Oh, I lost some people here. If you can thank God because things are going the way you want them, thank him when things are not going the way you want them. In everything, give thanks. Like, uh, 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 thanksgiving is what? A lifestyle. Let's look at Psalm 34, verse number 1, the message Bible. Psalm 34, verse number 1. What does the Bible say in Psalm 34, verse number 1? I bless God every chance I get. My lungs expand with his praise. I live and breathe God. If things aren't going well, hear this and be happy. Hear what? What are you supposed to hear? It is in verse number one. I bless God every chance I get. My lungs expand with his praises. All right. Number, verse number three. Join me in spreading the news together. Let's get the word out. Verse number four. God met me more than halfway. He freed, he freed me from my anxiety, anxi an sorry, anxious fears. Verse number five. Look at him. Give him your... Can you smile at God? Let me see you. Okay, I know you have your mask, but can you smile to God? All right. Okay, let's continue. Never... Never do what? Never hide your feelings from him. All right? And this is one of the things that I am strong with God. I never hide my disappointments. Ah. Huh? Pastor, you get disappointed. Yes. I am a human being. I get disappointed. But when I go before God, I tell him, Lord, I am discouraged with this. I am feeling this way. And then he, te he talks to me. He tells me what to do. Praise be to God. This relationship is not a monologue. It's a dialogue. Lord, I don't feel like preaching. <laughs> ah, Pastor, you're saying that. Yes. There are moments I don't feel like preaching. You're shocked. See, you, there are moments you don't feel like praying. And even coming to church. Yes, there are moments I also feel I should take like three months holiday. Go to Honolulu, Hawaii. Praise be to God. I don't hide my feelings from God. I tell God I am angry at so and so. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Let's continue. When I was desperate, I called out and God got me out of a picture the tight spots that you have had this year. Ken, remember your tight spot. Didn't know you'll get your next rent. Remember your tight spot. Praise be to God. Verse number seven, God's angel sets up a circle of protection around us while we pray. Open your mouth, taste. Open your eyes and see how good God is. Blessed are you who run to him. Worship God if you want the best. Worship opens doors to all his goodness. Praise be to God. And learn, tell yourself I'm going to learn. Learn to be the kind of a person that never forgets. Forgetfulness is wickedness. A man that forgets, a woman that forgets, is ranked as a wicked person. Praise be to God. It is true that it was your parents that paid your school fees, your nursery fees, but it is God that provided. Can I hear an amen? Learn to thank God even for your shoes. You see, we always take things for granted. The fact that you are wearing shoes, there is somebody uh, in this world whose prayer point is what? Shoes. Never take things for granted. Tell him, Father, thank you for the shoes I am wearing. 
You know, we can get so, so what? So loaded and so wise beyond our minds. We are in a generation that loves knowledge, but practices little or nothing called wisdom. The Bible says wisdom is profitable for all things. Can I hear an amen? Thank God that you are able to get children. Mm. There are people who are not able. And it doesn't mean that you are so special than them. Praise be to God. Am I talking to somebody here? Thank God that you have a phone. <laughs> These things that you trivialize, there are people who are crying to God, asking God for those opportunities. Mm? Thank God you have a job. How many people, Mr. Francis, have lost jobs this year and last year? How many people have lost their companies? Can I hear an amen? Before you can mama and complain that you're not hitting your targets, at least you're able to open your company. It's a reason to tell him, thank you. Can I hear an amen? amen. Number what? Number four, your prayers are never complete without thanksgiving. Your prayers are never complete without your thanksgiving. It is important to pray, but one of the ingredients of an effective prayer life is to include thanksgiving in your prayer. How do we see that? Or how is there a scripture that tells us that? Philippians 4, 6 says, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. I pray you are writing these things. Listen, paper never forgets. Please write this down. You may need this sermon, one of these fine days. All right? It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer, and what? And supplication, with what? With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. So the ingredient of a full-fledged prayer is what? Don't be anxious. No. <laughs> it begins there. Don't be anxious. So, don't pray the type of a prayer I call the firefighting prayer. You know, CC believers, challenge moja. You don't pray when things are okay. Then when things are going helter skelter, saizo ndiyo unataka kuenda meeting zote za prayer, ndiyo unataka kufast, those are firefighting prayers. Those are not nice prayers. Do you realize that Jesus will spend long prayers, long sessions of prayer. And when he was amongst the people, he will do short prayers. So the answer to the long prayers was what? The short prayers. But the problem with us is what? We do short prayers every single time. Didn't your Bible tell you pray without ceasing? Huh? Talk to me. So the ingredient of a prayer life is what? Don't be anxious. Then what? By prayer and supplication. With what? Thanksgiving. So, there is a place where you tell God. Because the Bible says in Mark eleven twenty three, What things soever you desire when you pray, believe, and you shall receive them. So, there is a place where you tell the Lord, Father, I want this particular car. Can I teach you how to pray? Can I teach you? Can I sidestep and teach you how to pray? God is a specific God. Ken, when you're praying for a car, don't say, Father, bless me with a car. Even a trailer is a car. Even a chariot is a car. You must be specific in your prayers. So you tell him, Lord, I trust you for a Mercedes-Benz AMG S65 by Tarbo, Pearl White. Specific. All right? Then after, that is Mark 11.23. After you do that, what do you do? Father, I thank you for my Mercedes-Benz. Until it comes, Father, I thank you for my Mercedes-Benz. So if you're having a challenge with, with your marriage, your marriage is not working, what do you do? Mark eleven twenty three. 23. What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you have received them and you'll have them. Father, touch my marriage. Touch my marriage in Jesus' name. Then from there, what do you do? Father, I thank you because my marriage is working. I thank you because my husband is getting better. I thank you because my, 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 me as the wife, I am getting better. Is it making sense? So, 
Let your request be made known to God. So how does God answer? Madam Carol, I'm glad you ask. It's in verse number seven. And there? And there? So God doesn't give you the car first. He doesn't heal your marriage per se first. What does he do? He gives you peace. That is why you find people with peace and they storm around. God has already answered. The fact that he has answered is what? Peace. Peace is an indication that God has answered your prayer. Oh, glory to God. So when I am praying, Jainar, and I'm not getting peace, it means what? It means that prayer is not in the will of God. Oh, let me stick to my thanksgiving here. Hey, I am praying, and I'm not getting peace. That prayer is not in the will of God. It will not be answered. Can I hear an amen? Can I hear a better amen? And I have realized with God, there will be moments when you go to pray for a particular thing, and God directs you into another, another thing to pray. Can I hear an amen? Praise be to God. Hallelujah. So your prayers will never be what? They will never be complete without thanksgiving. Philippians 4, 6. I'm going to read the message Bible. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petition and praises shape your worries into prayer. In other words, be worried if your praise to God are smaller than the obstacle you're facing. All right? Then he says what? Let, letting God know your concerns. Seven, before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. Number five. Number five, and then we are out of here. Two more, and then we are out of here. And thankfulness, if there is such a word, is a sign of wickedness. And thankfulness is a sign of wickedness. When we don't appreciate God, thank you so much. When we don't appreciate God for the things he has done, we become unthankful, forgetful, and covetous to the things we don't have rather than what he has already given us. Ingratitude is a sign of forgetfulness, which is wickedness, like I told you. Ingratitude will, will make you lose the wisdom of God and the fear of God. Romans 1, verse number 21. What does the Bible say? Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful. Notice that. They did not glorify God, neither were they thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. In other words, you can see when you stop glorifying God, when you stop thanking God, you're slowly allowing your heart to be darkened. All right? Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. All right? So, in this world, so many things is going to happen. We can see science has done a lot of things. Yeah? Science has done a lot of things. It is easy for a man to think that God doesn't exist. And the Bible says, only a fool says, there is no God. That's what the Bible says. All right? So, some people can get into that realm of thinking science is so good because science is curing cancer. But we forget it is God that has imparted that knowledge to those people. Praise be to God. Let's never get to a place where we are, we are so loaded that we can't thank God. Again, go to YouTube. Look at this video. Look at this country called Ireland. I would want you to go there. And look at this country called Ireland. It has the highest number of Satanism. So Ken, if we were to send you there to begin church, you begin praying from now. It has the highest level of Satanism. And guess what? The government does almost everything for the citizen. Including education. It's almost free there. Can I hear an amen? They have indeed lost 
a sense of God. They practice in the open Satanism. Can I hear an amen? May you never grow to a place you think your education is the, is, the, is the thing that is making waves in your life. May you never grow to a place that you think your wisdom is keeping your marriage. It is God, oh. It is God. It is God. God, akitoleo kwa picha ya life zetu, there is nothing we can do. He says in, in John 15, without me, you can do nothing. Can I hear better amen? Can I hear better amen? Praise be to God. And let me tell you, in these last days, are you listening to me? In these last days, what the enemy is trying to do is mess up the gospel. All of a sudden, if you look at the people from the age group of 30 and below, they are really questioning God. They are really questioning God. They are really questioning God. Mr. Francis, have you done research Kidogo Wone? People are going back to the tradition. Kikuyu young men are going back to the tradition. Going to that, that muti is called what? Mogumo tree. That, that is going back to their religious culture. That's what is happening. I'm, I'm lying. It's, see, it's happening. Madam Caro, is it happening? And then we shall wonder, where is God? We ourselves have turned around and faced another God. If you don't teach your children the things of God, they will blame you. God speaks about Abraham in Genesis 18. He says, for I know Abraham. He will teach his family. Me, Naju Abraham. He will teach fa his family the ways of God. The best heritage you can leave your children is to show them how to love Jesus. Aside from leaving them money and property and everything, show your children the value of God. Can I hear an amen? Let that be your resolution this coming year. Let your kids know God. Let your kids serve. Do you know your children are not little enough to serve? Let them carry seats. You're building a culture in their minds that you should serve God. Can I hear an amen? Ken, you think your daughter is young? Your daughter in 10 years, atako wapi? Atako how old? 11 years. Atako kijua vitu. Right now, when you're praying besides your bed, let them see you kneeling down. Let them see a man that gives all for Christ. Am I preaching? Am I helping somebody? Let your daughters know it is okay to cry out to God. For when they grow up, they will know. When I need help, I saw daddy kneeling down and crying out to God. Can I hear an amen? amen. Can I hear better amen? amen? Can I hear better amen? amen? Unthankfulness is a sign of wickedness. The New Living Translation of verse 21 of Romans 1 says, Yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. And they be began to think of foolish ideas of what God was like. <laughs> Man, I, I read this scripture, I saw my generation. Eh? As a result, their minds became dark and confused. As your pastor will tell you this, I said this beginning of this year. And I'm going to say it as we are closing. Be very careful. There is a teaching that has come that is called the new age. Watch out on the new age. I will tell you some of the writers you should avoid. There is a writer called Robin Sharma. There is a writer called Deepak something. Chokra. Yeah, that one. They are saying you don't need God. You have energy in you. <laughs> you can twist things. At you, you have energy in you. And they are sounding so spiritual. I tell you, this guy called the devil, a.k.a. Wainga, u jamani mnoma. Bila yesu, u jamani mnoma. Ata twist vitu zote. And you know, in Matthew 24, Bible in Asema, even the elect, in the last days, even the elect will be deceived. Watch out. I am seeing 
a generation that is pursuing knowledge at their own detriment. You want to read everything. You're following every man of God, man of God in quotes, on Facebook. Watch out. Can I hear an amen? John, I'm saying in 1 John 4, 4. No, 4, 1. I'm saying, test all spirits. Now see why it's in spirit. He just said, when they test, one day in spirit. He may say, test all spirits. Even what I preach here, be like the Jews of Berea. The Bible says they will search the scriptures to find out whether what Paul is saying it is so. Can I hear an amen? Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Number six. Number six. Thanksgiving is the environment for the miraculous. While prayer fuels our Christian lives and faith is the currency that brings the unseen to the realm of the seen, thanksgiving is the brooding ground or the environment for miraculous and the mirac uh, and miracle signs and wonders. Every time you approach the throne of grace, let your thanksgiving go before you. All right? Look at Jesus. He was God. And he didn't have to give thanks for anything, but he often did. Jesus set a remarkable example for us in many ways. But one was in thanksgiving. He was a man who gave praise and thanks to the Father in so many ways. For example, Matthew 15, 36. And he took the seven loaves and fishes and gave thanks and broke them and gave to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. He gave thanks to God for hearing his prayer for the raising of Lazarus. Even before Lazarus rose from the grave. John eleven forty one. Then he took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me and I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you send me. He knew the cross was before him and gave thanks to the Father as he broke bread and drank the cup with the disciples. Luke 22 verse 19. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And so we have a perfect example of righteous living from Jesus. And one thing he shows us is the position of praise and thanksgiving. What I find interesting is that all three of these instances that we have looked at, what we, we, we find were instances of thanksgiving. All right? The pressure to feed thousands, raise a friend from the grave, and face death on a cross will be intense for any one of us. But the response of Jesus was not to panic or run away from people, but turn to the Father with thanksgiving. Oh, praise God. And lastly, second lastly rather, thanksgiving attracts and retains the presence of God. Let me tell you, in the Old Testament, allow me to explain this. In the Old Testament, there was a place where the presence of God was concentrated. Okay? Now, in the New Testament, we are carriers of the presence of God. But let me help you here. Is the Lord present here? Talk to me. Is the Lord present here? Present here? When you go to your matatu, is the Lord present there? All right. But there is something called the concentrated presence of God. Where the presence of God is zeroed in a particular place. For example, there is light because there is sun. Sindio, if I take a magnifying glass, I can do what? Concentrate the rays of the sun into a particular place. Can I hear an amen? So it is true that the presence of God is everywhere. But it's equally true that the Lord can concentrate his presence on a particular thing. Can I hear an amen? So, how do you attract and retain the presence of God? Psalm 100 and verse number 4. I want us to read the message translation. What does the Bible say? It says what? Enter with a password. So, for you, because you have smartphones, you have passwords. You know, nobody can access your gadget without the password. Sindio, or your laptop, or whichever gadget you have. So here the Bible tells us what, Mr. Francis? That the password is what? The password to his presence is what? 
Make yourself at home. Talking praises. Thank him. Worship him. Praise be to God. So how do I get into that concentrated presence? Thank you, Jesus. Can I hear an amen? Psalm 95, verse number 2. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Do you want to be constantly full of the Holy Spirit? Who wants to be constantly full of the Holy Spirit? Is it, you see it in Ephesians 5, verse number 20. Giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to God. Number eight, thanksgiving creates. When you begin to thank the Lord for the things he, he, has, uh, he shall do, sorry, you begin to use your mouth to create and to call those things that are not as though they are. Every day, publish what you want to see in your destiny, in your marriage through thanksgiving. Psalm 26, Psalm 26 verse number 7 says, that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of thy wondrous works. And lastly, lastly, Thanksgiving is a sacrifice. Thanksgiving is a sacrifice. We can have thankful hearts towards God even when we don't feel thankful for the circumstances. We can grieve and still be thankful. We can hurt and still be thankful. Hebrews 13, and verse number 15. Hebrews 13, 15. By him, Jesus, therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Sometimes we feel we have waited long enough, but even so, be thankful continually. It is a sacrifice the Lord loves and rewards. Look at the attitude of David in the following scriptures. Psalm 107, verse number 2. Psalm 107, verse number 2. And let them sacrifice the sacrifice of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. Psalm 50, verse number 14. Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. Psalm 116, verse number 17. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. I will call upon the name of the Lord. I said all this today to tell you that there is a place for thanksgiving. You may not understand some things you go through, but you have got to thank him. You have got to learn how to thank God for everything that you have. John says in John 3, he says, what do you have that has not come from above? What do you have that has not come from above? Learn to be thankful. And one of the ways that you are maturing in the things of God is that you're thankful. You thank God. God has been so faithful from January. I remember some time back, I got sick of COVID. And let me tell you, it was so amazing that in that situation, I was very, very weak. My wife will tell you I was weak. I have never been sick for years, for over 20 years, until this year. But I remember I would ask the Lord, how will I minister on Sunday? And let me tell you, saints, I will come here with my mask, preach, like I'm very okay. And when I drop the microphone, hey, hey, my friend, I would have uh, pressed down, shaken together, running over COVID. And we still came, we preached. I remember I got COVID, my wife got COVID, the kids got COVID. I remember this year, my young son was every now and then falling, falling, we can't explain. We go to the doctors. Checkups are done, left, right, and center, but he's falling. And one time I remember preaching here and I had left him. He was in a very bad shape, but I came to preach. I told God, I'm going to do your business. You do your business. I'm going to do yours. You, in turn, do your business. Take care of my family. Praise be to God. I remember this year, there was a time we were really pressed with a certain need. I didn't know how it's going to come. But the Lord sent an angel and delivered us. Praise be to God. I remember when we were, we, we were, we were beginning church in January. We needed certain things in church. 
the Lord provided. He has been a good God. That is my testimony. I don't know about your testimony. I want you for a minute to think about your life. And think about the things that God has done. I'm done. I told you I'm going to finish very early today. But I want you to take a journey over your life. What are the things that God has done that you're so grateful? What are the things that God has done that you're so grateful? What are some of those things? What are some of those things? I want you to take stock of your life. What are some of those things that the Lord has done for you? There is nobody here who can stand and say that God has not been faithful. What are some of those things that God has been faithful? Tell him, Lord, thank you. Thank you. 